Hi. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Mom. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel, Crystal and Vivian. By Vivian. <laughs> mukbang. Today, mukbang, we are having homemade spaghetti. Yum. Freshly baked this morning. I'm gonna show you guys how I like to make my spaghetti. Sriracha mixed with tapatio. Amazing combo. Don't overdo it. I'm gonna overdo it. No. I l love it. If you guys haven't tried this yet, I definitely recommend if you like hot sauce. Not too much, Vivian. Let me have try a little bit. Do it how I do it. No. Just a, li a little corner right there. Do it how I do it. And let me know how you like it. A little bit. This is my mom's first time trying it. She always gets mad at me. Because <laughs> I love hot sauce. And she's always telling me, Stop it. Stop putting sriracha in your pho. Stop putting sriracha in your spaghetti. For me, if food is not spicy, I just, it's not complete. I can't, you know, eat it. This is fresh salad. Well, I bought this market salad. It's ready made. Grateful. This is my cup I got from the market. Grateful. Like it? Yeah, definitely goes with your channel. Mm hmm. All right, first bite. Let's see how you did, Mom. You've done better. You like it? Let's see. It's not as soft as as your other meatballs. How come? Let me see. I remember you made it really soft before. Mm -hmm. It's soft enough. Really? Mm -hmm. I remember you made it really soft before. Today's I use. A salad, a sandwich, no bread, the white bread, the inside part to mix it with this two pounds beef. I use three slice of white bread. Uh huh. Have you heard or seen that? No. So to make the meat soft, well, I was looking for bread, uh, bread crumbs. We ran out, right? Because I couldn't find it. Well. I have some in my cabinet. So I was looking for it. Um, it wasn't there. And then I watched a video before that um, one of the cooks, she, they used um, part of the bread, but the inside, not the outside. Take out the outside, three slices. I mix with two pounds of, of beef and then seasoning it. And then I deep fry the meatball, not deep fry, I fry the meatball, just not totally, completely fry and then I put back in the pot. That's how I do it. Mm. How did you do it before? I used the red crumb. And, and that was the only difference that you did? I think I also used I think I also used um, chicken egg. One chicken egg? egg? Oh. One egg. And you didn't do eggs this time? I didn't do egg this time. Okay, that's what you're missing. You think so? It's not soft enough, mm -hmm. or maybe I didn't cook long enough. No, it's cooked. It's just it's not, not soft. soft. Okay. So, so missing one egg? Mm hmm. I mean, this one tastes okay. The first one I bit into just tastes like A little hard. ground beef, but then this one actually tastes really good. Hmm. Mm hmm So this is the lettuce I bought from the market. It's, it's so um, everything is in the bag. It just makes it make it so easy. I'm glad you bought the lettuce because the salad because 
I like to have um, salad with my dishes. Mm -hmm. It makes it complete. Mm -hmm. So today's the first time I'm making this dish instead of share with my friend, mm -hmm. half of it. But the cost of making it is <laughs> so expensive. That's why I was like, what? Can I have some more? How, so what was the total cost and how much are you selling it for? So this pot, the meat alone is 20 Twenty-three dollars, baby. That's so much. Twenty-three dollars, and the the spaghetti sauce, the um, tomato sauce, and the fresh tomato, the pasta, pasta. So pasta? all, uh -huh. or maybe thirty dollars. Really? No. I think about thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. And then you have some for us, right? Still mm -hmm. half. A lot. Okay. Half, half. So um, I charged her twenty dollars, and my just for the the grocery alone is over ten dollars, not including gasoline. And I spent an hour and a half cooking. So yeah, I'm not making profit. <laughs> um, it's like you're working for the sweatshop. <laughs> Actually, it's like you're paying her to buy food from you. <laughs> restaurant make money because they bought all their grocery in bulk with discount price that's how they able to make money but if you go to the restaurant and buy it like a regular shopper then no way you can really make profit and on top of that you only sell to one customer not like 10 so when you when you make a big amount then that's when you actually make profit but if you just yeah. make it just for one customer then there's no profit in that I know I realized that <laughs> but mm -hmm. today when I <coughs> when I was dropping off Jaden uh -huh. at, your, at the babysitter mm -hmm. I told her that the reason I was late because I was cooking the morning and I asked her if she like the egg rolls we share. She said, oh my God, <coughs> her children and her family love it so much. Mm -hmm. So I told her, you know what? I can make it for you. Just let me know in a week in advance so I can prepare. So um, she, she, she will ask her uh, in-laws if they want to order some as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's hard work. But as long as my family and friends love it, that's another to me. I, I don't think I really can make money out of doing it because it take me five hours. It took me last time five, six hours to make 100 egg rolls. And she sells each one for 50 cents. And then the cost alone. Okay, is wait. So... Over it took you five hours, let's say, to make a hundred egg rolls. You sell each one for fifty cents, so you're getting paid. So you make fifty dollars minus the minus grocery. the gro How much did the groceries cost? The grocery cost is about twenty five dollars. So for five hours, you made twenty five dollars. <laughs> so I make five dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Is it good or bad? Horrible. It's, it's bad, right? <laughs> Minimum wage of fifteen dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing good in this in this new business. <laughs> nope. You just sell yourself short. You make your prices too low. You know, for two egg rolls at the pho restaurant, two egg rolls, lettuce and fish sauce, that's nine dollars for two egg rolls. You're selling ten egg rolls for five dollars. I know. I guess 
I guess I'm not a business woman <laughs> after all. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm. There must be a way. But we'll see. For right now. That's what it is. Something. I mean, I, I get the joy out of having, hearing people love the food I, I make. And that's my joy. Joy don't pay bills. <laughs> True. <laughs> but right now I have license to uh, to do real estate. Current license to do real estate, which I can make good money, but I'm not into it at as of yet. I don't know if I ever will be. I'm licensed for insurance. So I guess money is not something that I really like attract me for some reason. Yeah, money does not, you do not attract money. I, I mean, I'm, that's not something that I work toward for, just money. I'm more an, an idealist. I like to do things that make me happy and make others happy. I guess that's who I am. And that's why I chose to be a writer, a public speaker, um, an inspirational speaker, and that's that's make me happy. And I think that's most important, more important than making money. Yeah, but like I said, you know, you could do that, but you also have to think about your life, supporting yourself. You could do what makes you happy, but make sure that you're able to eat at the end of the day. Yeah. So far, I'm doing good. So far, I'm still having saving that lasts me a year. <laughs> I know something will come up. My book, Vivian. Mm -hmm. Have I told you about my book? What part about it? I'm having a um, somebody is representing my book to um, to the um, traditional publisher, so they're working on it right now. Nice. And they say that if imagine if they're able to uh, the traditional publisher love it, you know, like what they would give me like twenty, thirty thousand dollars, even fifty thousand dollars just for one book. Mm -hmm. And then from there, after that, if thing works out, you get royalty afterward. But you know, it's. It's something that I like, and if that happened, if they like my book, my life, how I lead my life, and uh, my my story, my life story sells, you know, I'm living a a dream life of doing what I love and helping others, and if that happened, hey, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, you know, that would be really nice, right? That lasts me another year, and then, and hopefully that will turn into a motion picture. That's what they are also working on too. Imagine if that happened, then I never will have to worry about uh, making ends meet because uh, you know that pay for it. So that's what I focus on. And last night I received an email from one of my new friends, a, a mutual friend. Mutual? Mutual. And um, she wants to interview me on television this coming Friday. She's a famous singer. She, um, I think she's been in the business, entertainment business for the last 40 years. Wow. Yeah, she's very well known in the Vietnamese community. Mm -hmm. um, in Vietnam and here as well. So she's gonna interview my my life about my books, but she said mostly my life, how how um, it's going since I come here and what made me come here, things like that. Because the interview is gonna be 42 minutes long. So we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Sounds fun. I yeah, I told my boyfriend about that. 
Anyways, so what do you want to talk to your YouTube subscribers? Um, just sharing with them, with you guys. Oh, updates of my um, my future. Hopefully, there's a future in television for me. I'm I'm hoping to um, land just a small job. What I like to do is public speaking, sharing stories. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I enjoy sharing short story, reading and narrating. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully I, I can do something like that. Yeah. I, I don't have a voice for singing, but I can have a voice for speaking. Yeah, you have a very soothing voice. Very, in Vietnamese, at least. <laughs> so, the, I mean, you, in the last six months, every week I narrated the Vietnamese story. After I narrate it, I always watch it one time, and that was it. Just happened last week, I, um, turn on, I, I turn on one story that I read a while back. As soon as I turn it on, I fell asleep. Was, and I woke up, the, the story was done. I was like, wait, how did that happen? And I try again. I fell asleep on my story two times. Is it because it's so boring? I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was soothing. That I didn't even, you know, it was like a bedtime ASMR. story. Bedtime story, that kind of feeling. So two times I fell asleep in the same story. So the third time I told myself, do not fall asleep, I want to listen to it. So nowadays, every time I wake up in the middle of the night, or I couldn't go back to sleep, I listen to my <clears> own story. I was like, this is so awesome. Yeah, people do that. Like, um, they have study with me, you know, ASMR, write with me, ASMR. Uh -huh. They like to listen to, for me personally, I like to play YouTube in the background while I clean up. You know, just listen, like a podcast, right? You're just listening to somebody talk, and then, mm -hmm. you know, somebody has a soothing voice, you could fall asleep to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just realized that, um, that I, I am able to... To make people fall asleep if they can't. <laughs> I was like, wow. This You're is able so to put people to sleep with your talking. <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> so. Turn your weaknesses into strengths, right? <laughs> hey, you don't need to. You don't need to have a sleeping pills. So all you have to do is just listen to me talk or read. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy reading a lot. And now. So I'm, I'm hoping to find a uh, part-time job doing whatever it is on television, reading, speaking, or even reading news, news, and things like that. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't hurt to work a couple of days a week, yeah. right? And um, make extra bucks. That's yeah, what I need. Better than working every day here and make five dollars an hour. <laughs> well, this is just. Just for the fun of it. I mean, if I have a lot of customers, I'll make some extra money. But well, you I need to increase your price too. Yeah, that's kind of hard because, um, yeah, I thought about that, but I feel bad. Like, you, you don't know. think about yourself? Because mm -hmm. your time is money, right? Mm -hmm. Or you feel feeling bad for? They're just buying food from you. I feel bad for not giving them in, uh, you know, a good amount. That's my thing. But, what do you mean? Hmm. What do you mean, not good amount? Because I told them it's going to cost $20 a tray. <laughs> if I put less, I'll feel bad. But I said increase your price next time. Okay, smaller trays. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. Um, I want to talk to you about, about your experience working at the... Um, Counselor, uh huh. Because you shared with me the last time you came home, which was last Sunday. I want to mm -hmm. hear that, and um, it touched my heart when you told me that uh, one of your girls wanted a hug and she couldn't. And um, she's, you know, just just as your experience, what it's like, and what do you want people to understand about those girls, <coughs> their parents. Um, well, I can't go into too much detail, no, no detail because it is all very confidential, but um, pretty much at this moment, I work at a group home, and this past weekend, I 
um, went to a group home that was in lockdown because a girl is suspected of having COVID. And um, she just got upset because she wanted to play with me, but we're not able to play with her because, you know, we can't, she's supposed to be quarantined. Uh, so she got really mad and she ended up throwing a phone at my coworker's face and made her nose bleed. And then after- I want you to share, what is group home? Okay. Okay, so a group home, okay, so we all know what foster system is, right? Originally, initially when a child gets removed from their parents, um, the government would first prioritize kinship. So grandma, aunties, uncles, all that stuff, put the child in their home. If no uh, relatives can take the child in, then the child then gets placed into the foster care system. So then um, adopt, foster parents try to adopt the kid. So having a foster parent is a sec, like the next best thing away from, you know, no longer being with your family. So a foster care, like foster parents would um, adopt a foster child and then kind of, you know, just raise them as their own. <coughs> and this could be short term or long term. And then if children are unable to, um, if children are unable to, uh, I guess, stay in a foster home with foster parents. <coughs> if nobody um, want them, then they stay with the group home. So like if, you know, their behaviors are too difficult to handle for foster parents mm -hmm. or, or possibly because if there's no foster parents available to adopt them because there are a lot of foster kids out there, mm -hmm. then they go to group homes. Mm -hmm. And then group homes, um, you live with other residents other foster children like yourself and then um you live in a home and you have staff that come to that group home to you know like have you do your chores let's go grocery shopping like run this house you know like um we could do fun things as well and do rec and go watch a movie and all that stuff but the girls do need to accumulate points in order to do fun activities and they also get allowances as well oh. Yeah, so they get they get allowances for doing their chores, and they get you know phone privileges depending on like how how they do their chores. Yeah. So. How old can they stay in the group home? Um, for now, okay. So now it is one day before their nineteenth birthday. So after they turn eighteen, they have one day until they turn nineteen. Okay. So to leave the extension. Yes. Uh, and then now uh, the government also has a new program i mean it's not that new it's been in the game for 10 years now it's called <clears throat> what is it called um it's like ab12 but it's pretty much um extended foster care in a way for foster youth who have um who've graduated or who've who've turned 18 and they're transitioning into adulthood rather mm -hmm. than you know, as soon as the foster youth is 18, you tell them, all right, you're on your own now. It doesn't work out like that. They mm -hmm. are going to end up homeless because they don't have support. They don't have an education. They don't have a work experience. They don't have all these things, right? Mm -hmm. So then now they have this program where um, once, if you are in the foster care system, you turn 18, you qualify for this program, which um, provides you with housing on the condition that you either work or you go to school or you do something you know mm -hmm. that's catered towards your future and <coughs> um and then there are also programs within it i i don't know if all of the programs do this but some of the programs make the participants pay uh rent money but the rent money is put in a savings for the participants so when they I think uh, it they're allowed to stay for a couple years, like up until like 22, 23 years old. So once they grow, once they are done with the program, then all of the savings that they put in for their rent is given to them so that oh, they wow. could then, you know, pay for an apartment. Oh, wow. And, you know, during that time, in order to be qualified, you have to be working or go to school. So by the time they graduate from the program, they're going to have that work experience already or at least some education to help them get a oh, get a wow. job that mm -hmm. is really good mm -hmm. so after foster home they, they still can apply for other programs yeah. government funded and they still, still can stay mm -hmm. yeah that is really good for youth 
uh, that um, I mean I don't know if they all know about the program. They do. If they're in the foster care system, then their caseworker or their therapist or their counselor, whoever is working with them, will let them know about the program. Yeah. Availability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's another one that called Job Course. Have you heard of? Yeah. Hi, Ashley. So Job Course is also similar, but for regular, regular students. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you can go there from 16 to 24. Uh-huh. You get to stay for free, and you gotta eat. You got three days, three uh three times a day food, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh huh. You get allowance. You get to go out because I stay in LHF court before. Oh, so you actually participated in this before? Mm-hmm. And it's wow. for it's for young adults from 16 to 24. Uh huh. And uh, free of charge. You. You can go to a vocational school for two years, uh-huh. and uh, all paid for. And you can uh, allowance pay for uh, your bus, your uh, weekly allowance, or something like that. So yeah, it's available. I mean, can I sign up? <laughs> can you sign up? How do I get in? You already passed. It's maximum twenty-four. Charlie can sign up. Wow. <laughs> wow. If if there's no play. We know where he can go, right? <laughs> Wait, so they give you rent money for your own apartment? No, LHF Court is a place where they have big buildings. Uh huh. We're talking about the place I stay, 13 floors. Mm-hmm. And five floors are for residents. Boys separately stay in separate floor, and then girls. So it's like a dorm that you're staying yeah. in? Yeah. And then so you get everything fed, everything. I mean, all you do is just. Be good, clean your room, don't get in trouble, then you can get a free pass to go home on the weekend. What? It's, it's really awesome. I mean, for children that have no other place to go, maybe you can give it to the information to them later on. Wow. Up to 24 years of age. What's the craziest thing you've ever saw at Job Corps? Like a crazy incident. I would assume there would be some because it's like a giant dorm. But they have they have counselor everywhere uh, on every floor. They have two counselor twenty four seven. And girls and boys stay in separate mm-hmm. dorms. So I didn't see any craziness going on. <laughs> it was, I mean, believe before I left the place, I took. I don't know. I took a bed sheet with me. Oh, well, now you're gonna get arrested. <laughs> What is it called? Uh, bed, co- bed cover? Bed uh-huh. What, a fitted sheet? Uh, something on top of the, um, the bed. So, something like, it's just a small one. What it, the reason I took it because I want to give like a, a souvenir. Souvenir. Oh. <laughs> so I still have it in my bag. Do you? Like today? Yeah, up to in today. I mean, I was there when I was 18 to 20, um, 50, that 30 years I carry with me. Wow, I never saw it before. What size is it? I'll show it to you. It's, it's like a, a full t- size. Wow. I'll show it to you next next time when we talk. Wow, that's interesting. The reason I keep it because I, it, it's something that, um, because back then, when I came in came there, I didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. I had twenty dollars when I was driven to LHF for twenty dollars. That was it. Nothing else. Wow. No job skill, no driving skill, no English skill, no nothing. But um, I was there, but when I was there for whole two years, I felt at home. I felt okay. more at peace than I was before. And uh, because th- that, with that feeling, I, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it stayed with me for so long. How did you find out about this? From my high school friend, her uh-huh. sister went to LHF Corn. And that helped you get work experience and all that stuff. So when I was there, I was able to get my GED. That's good. Because I um, dropped out of high school. I got my GED, got my driving license. Wow. I got my, um, I learned how to read. Oh, um, initially, I started with nursing program. Oh. And I was okay. 
for the um, class, you know, or the study. I studied so hard, I made it. But when it comes to practice, I went to... Seeing blood I, and stuff. I remember I went to um, a nursing home and um, they asked me to have this man to brush his teeth, you know, like give him toothbrush and toothpaste and, and water to brush his teeth, but he refused to brush his teeth. And then when he started brushing his teeth, I ran out and <laughs> threw up. Like, I, I guess I couldn't handle. The smell was so bad. Yeah. So the, um, the manager or my supervisor saw that. <laughs> and then after that, she, she, she found me because she said, you don't fit for this job. You know, I'm that kind, that little thing that can make you, God, you know. Like feeling sick. Uh huh. So when they uh, kicked me out from the nursing program, I was so devastated. I was Aww. like, oh my God, this is the only thing that I thought I'm gonna make, you know, like, th I, I thought that's all I knew. And how long did you invest in that? I wouldn't, I think maybe six months before we started, yeah, before we started training. Wow. It's just a low uh, nursing, nur nurse, like, I think it's CNN or. Mm -hmm. or at CNN, yeah, the, the lowest one. So I was so hurt, so I was like, oh my God. And, um, but like, I mean, the good thing that I didn't go forward and, and try harder because I would be so miserable. Mm -hmm. You can only be happy with what you love. Mm -hmm. I, I love the people, but I couldn't handle it. So I, I, I mean, even if I make $30 an hour, $40, I would still be very miserable, right? So and then I uh, and then I went for a secretary mm -hmm. job. Um, I learned how to type. I type very fast, sixty-five words, seventy words per minute. That's Got good. my certificate and all that. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> but my best job is writing <laughs> the story. Yeah. I just I can get lost in just creating story. Yeah, for me, growing up, I thought I wanted to be a teacher until I became an after-school teacher, and I was like, nope, this ain't it. And I'm glad I got that experience. What's the reason you don't want to be a teacher? Mm -hmm. Because, like, yeah, I want to help kids, but the way I want to help kids is by helping them with their personal life and... You know, it's harder to do that as a teacher. As a teacher, your academic is your focus. For me, my focus is like, how's your home home life? How's your mental well-being? You mm -hmm. know, all these other things that contribute to your academics. Mm -hmm. So you're more interested in the um, mental health. Yeah, but aside from that, like I remember when I was an after-school teacher. Geez, these kids, like I love them so much, but they were. They were getting on nerves because, you know, like they'll purposely like act up. And of course, it's an after school program. So like they're I get it. They're in school all day. Now they're in after school all night, Another you know? Day, yeah. yeah. So it, I get it. But like it, it was hard. And then like trying to develop study lessons and all that stuff. I didn't care for How it. How long did you work for? <clears throat> I worked for a year. Mm. And then That's um, a good amount. And then I became a residential counselor, and I've been a residential counselor for a year, and I really like it. It's it's crazy because, like, when I first got in, my supervisor and the supervisors who were training me were like, be prepared. You're going to get spit on. You're going to get called names. You're going to get punched in the face. You're going to get food thrown at you. You're going to get this, this. And I was scared. I'm not going to lie. I was scared because, like, that's never happened to me before, but... Um, Thankfully, like, I still haven't experienced that, and I feel like a lot of it has to do with the rapport you build with the clients. You know, like, you talk to them like they're human. You, like, even if you're trying to address the situation, you just let them know, like, look, I am doing this for you because I don't want you to get hurt or you can't do these things. Of course, I also have it easier because I am an on-call staff, so I do move from house to house, and so um, compared to the full-time staffs there, they had to actually implement more rules than I do. So I'm more like that fun substitute teacher, you know? <laughs> Everybody's experienced that at school, you know? So I get it. Like, it for me, it's a lot different. Um, but luckily, so far, I haven't experienced anything traumatizing. I mean, 
when I tell people the stories of the things I've go through, they're like, what the heck? That is insane. Like you could have got stabbed. You could have got this and this and this. And I'm just like, yeah, but I did not <laughs> And it's just like, it's interesting. There is always going to be an interesting day at my work for sure. And that's what I like the most. Like, I don't like, you know, doing a job that makes me feel stagnant. I like human connection. I like being able to talk to my, you know, my clients and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm really happy with the profession that I chose to be a therapist. Um, because that's what I want to do. I want to help people. I want to talk to people. You know, like I'm getting to get paid to talk to people. How awesome is that? Yeah. It's really awesome, Joe. Yeah. And I remember when I was in high school, there was interns at my high school. And I think I spoke to like a psychology intern. Um, she was my counselor. <clears throat> and then I just, I remember it was really nice because, you know, I had a lot of emotions built up inside me, but I didn't have anybody to talk to. And here's this lady who's um, unbiased and you know like just there to listen to me blabber on about my life mm -hmm. and i remember her to still to this day and i remember when i started college i was like wow that seems so fun like she's just sitting there taking notes and hearing me talk i can do that <laughs> but then i realized like that means i would need to stop talking which i really like to do so um i've been working on <laughs> Yeah, so I've been working on uh, doing more active listening and allowing other people to talk and without interjecting like, oh, like, yeah, I've had this experience too. Mm -hmm. And then tell them about my experience. No, like what I've been practicing doing is um, just hear them talk. And if I feel like it would be beneficial to validate their, validate their feelings or, you know, let them know that they're not alone, then I'll say, oh, yeah, I've been through this situation before too, but not resort to that as a first first mm -hmm. thing and then another thing that i've been practicing is sitting with silence before i was a type of person who would like hate it when it's quiet if it's quiet i would make up like random just like small talk with anybody who's around mm -hmm. and then now i really like sitting with silence like i don't mind and you know i it's comfortable for me which is something that you have to get used to as a therapist you know you have when you ask a very uh, difficult question obviously the client's not going to jump right away and say anything um, so you allow them to talk yeah so you just allow them to talk and you just sit there in silence and it is awkward i do like <laughs> it is awkward um and in, at first it does make you feel nervous and it's something that i am working on wait are you uh, talking to client now? uh i have one client who i just did an assessment with so soon i will be meeting with the child to begin um counseling are they from, are they from school <clears throat> Who are they? All of them are from school. I am a school counselor intern at this moment. And this client that I'm going to be working on, I don't know if I'm going to have some counter-transference. Do you know what counter-transference means? Counter-transference is when a client reminds you of somebody in your personal life. Like a client can remind you of your mom. Like, oh. And it could be harmful to the therapeutic process and it's important to address these feelings with your therapist supervisor. And so the client that I have um, kind of reminds me of my son <laughs> in a way. Like, I was speaking... Is it a good son? Uh, I don't know. So, like, with my son, Jaden, he is capable and he is smart and he's all, all the above. But he's also kind of lazy. Like, he won't <laughs> do his homework unless you're there and you really assist him throughout doing it and it's oh, like no. he's fully capable of doing it and so um i'm interested in working with my client because these are the things that i want to uh work on with my client and so <clears throat> when i am looking up resources and all that stuff i could then also apply it to my son hey and hopefully it works win -win um, situation. yeah yeah because oh, there are things I do with my son and there are things that work with him and then there are other things I don't so I just need to see what works and then maybe I could bring back the the reward system chart mm -hmm. I think that's very I think that's what he likes yeah he likes that he I'll he loves rewards like that. he likes rewards but at the same time I don't want him to think like every time you do something you're gonna get a reward so right. like, I took it away and but then again there is like a lot of studies that back it up too so I think I'm going to bring it back, and I think I might also apply that to my client to, to see if my client's um, guardians would 
be a set, like get on board with that too. So. Okay, Vivian. It's a long. Uh, we have a good lunch today. Spaghetti, meatball, salad. And, uh -huh. um, after after this, I'm gonna rest a little bit, and uh, I'll make fried rice, shrimp fried rice for my friend, and uh, I'll make her a tray of shrimp fried rice, and ch and I have my spaghetti ready, so I'm good. Uh huh. So it's not a lot of work. Shrimp fried rice. Um, I already make the with fried rice. You make the rice before, so always um, one day old rice. Mm -hmm. Probably take me an hour to make. Yeah, not making money, but it's still okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, guys, uh, thank you. Thank you for watching us talk, eat, and share our days. And, um, uh, Vivian, you have anything to say? Um, just take care of yourself. Take care of your mental well-being. Um, Here's a reminder that it's okay to cry, it's okay to be sad, and it's okay to watch TV, indulge in a little bit of things, indulge in things every day that makes you happy. Play with your pets, talk to your loved ones, go for a walk, do uh, you. And reach out for help if you need help, especially parents at home, if you are stressed out, reach out for help, and uh, most importantly, take care of yourself first, and then take care of your loved ones. And, um, you know, it, it's very sad to see uh, your clients, your, the children without parents at this point. I wish I have, um, I wish I had a lot of money to really help them, you know, help them, um, you know. Yeah. That, that's, that's my dream, to, to help the orphanage, <coughs> the, the one that abandons by parents. Yeah. You know, so uh, for now, um, do my best. Hopefully things will get better, and uh, we, do we, can, we can uh, yeah. we, we both can help, right? With yeah. your knowledge and my heart, we both can do that. Well, together. one thing I definitely do want to do in the future is um, be a foster parent. Mm -hmm. There's so many that need help, you know, yeah. especially those girls that have nobody. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Um, uh, we'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. I really, really love this one. It's cute. I Target know. or what? Target. Target has they cute have stuff. Two. They have two. One is this color and the other one is red. This one, but it's, it's in red one. Do you want one? No, but that one's really cute. I like that. You chose that color. You can have the other one when we do mukbang. You can use. Oh yeah, that'll be cute. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Okay. So my suggestion is cut off like 